Uh, for me, one, one I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say the biggest, but one that strikes me often is, is that people get a sense that the challenges of AI are very unique, um, whereas I, I view the challenges more like an amplification of like, existing challenges. So it's lots of questions that we've been grappling with for a very long time, and they get amplified by AI because with AI, everything is like bigger, faster, you, you have more scale. So it, it, it puts more light uh, on, on existing challenges that were always there, but perhaps less apparent. Or, well, actually there's two that struck me a lot. First one is uh, the sense that communicating uh, to people that often it's not a technical question, often the big question is to define what it is that's good. So if there's a right thing to do, decide what it is. And often it's not a technical problem. Often it's two different people are going to disagree about what the right thing to do is because there, there is never, it's, no, it's not black and white. Often it's trade-offs and often they are complicated. And unfortunately with um, a, a complex world, world and complex uh, situations, often they're complicated in a way that's not super easy to understand in particular for big statistical phenomena. Uh, for this year, we can think of COVID for example, and, and contamination, these kind of, of questions. People, when they, they have an idea of, of what's the right thing to do, often they think in, uh, in terms of representative narratives and not this bigger statistical picture. So for example, uh, at the very beginning when, when you had uh, exponential contamination, it was mathematically certain what was going to happen, but lots of people were not getting that sense. So with AI, we get a lot of, of these similar ideas where the trade-offs um, because of, of scale are not that easy to uh, explain very simply in a way that's going to resonate with people. So a big challenge is this idea of communication for complicated ideas and uh, nuanced situations that are sometimes not easy to fit in like one sentence. So I think the most important thing here is it should be a kind of collaborative framework where um, lots of uh, professionals from different disciplines come together because they all have a different perspective. So you need to have people who will understand the techniques themselves, people who have more of a uh, philosophy or ethical background, sociologists, psychologists, and, and it needs to be interdisciplinary because they're going to understand different parts of the problem. And as I mentioned before, it's really a trade-off. So you need to understand all the sides of the trade-off before you can make a decision about what's good and what's desirable, what's problematic. So I think the role of, of academia is both to provide the expertise, the studies and analysis from the, the fine knowledge of what's happening and also this sense of like permanence of studying and trying to understand and being there and uh, giving this long view of the trade-offs both for good and for uh, dangers. So for me, there's uh, the biggest pro um, the biggest promise of AI for this is really scalability. That lots of people who would not have access to resources, uh, thanks to systems that are automated, they can really get uh, a better system that can be personalized to them uh, at very low cost or, or, or like for free, which would not be possible when you have to find a professional. So for example, if you think of, of wellness and uh, trying to find somebody who can help you uh, learn wellness techniques or meditations or these kind of things. Then with a uh, conversational AI, you could have your own personal coach that could talk to you even if you can't afford to see someone and, and, and pay someone. So that way, even for all the world of, uh, of, of people who would not be able to afford these resources, then we can bring that to them with, with AI uh, thanks to its scalability. And the second aspect of that is personalization where really um, given that a lot of AI is, is based on learning and really learning about the person, you can really learn from everyday interaction, often on a device like a, a phone that people have with them all the time. And they can really get this personalized interaction with the system. And lots of research shows that people are actually more comfortable 
uh, sharing things with a system that won't judge them because it's not a human. And they know that it's just uh, a system that they're talking to. So they feel like uh, they can be more open without any fear of stigma or judgment or uh, this kind of, of uh, bad things. Yeah, so for me, that's a bit like what I said earlier about um, AI challenges being connected to bigger challenges. These are the same, these are, for me, the biggest challenges are, are just the same as in regular life, like how, how to help people. So, uh, for example, if you have somebody, you have this tension between different values that we have, for example, between freedom and uh, freedom of choice and control of your own personal choices and doing what's good for you. Uh, so, for example, if somebody really wants to eat McDonald's every day, it's their choice, but it's bad for them. So should I force them not to do that? Uh, and, and somebody who never wants to exercise, like my dad, <laughs> it's if, if I have a choice between forcing him to exercise and letting him choose for himself, even though he's choosing wrong. And in some cases, he doesn't even have the tools to realize he's choosing wrong because he, he doesn't want to hear about this. He's not interested. So it's this tension between several values. So the, the, the sense of freedom and the sense of what's good for you. What, um, so what does it mean to help someone? To help them have, like stage an intervention or let them decide for themselves. And we see a lot of that too. Uh, like this year with COVID, especially where I live in the US, there's a lot of tension between freedom where lots of people get really, really, really distressed by the idea that they have to wear a mask and that it's, uh, it's, it's like, uh, uh, like uh, it's mandatory in some places and they feel like it's a big uh, impingement on their personal freedom. But then you have public health and the scientific consensus that it's actually very helpful to wear a mask. And so, again, you have this tension of value. So I would say for wellness, this is just the, the same challenges, the ethical challenges, like what does it mean to help someone? Uh, where do you draw the line between personal freedom and uh, what you can do for them as opposed to what they want and what they decide for themselves, knowing that for everyone, this is very different and there's lots of tensions in that space. I mean, we're a society, right? And, and um, society functions best when, I mean, for me, uh, when, when people do what they're best at and what they're like knowledgeable in. And, and so interdisciplinary means you're going to have people who really know what they're talking about from many different places. And if you think of ethical challenges, there's many dimensions that you need to get right in terms of, uh, often it's a trade-off because you have like benefits and potential risks and you need to weigh them. And so, you need people who have a sense of the history of how this has been dealt with in the past. You need people who really understand the, the systems we're talking about. You need people who get a good sense of, of uh, how this works and how this could work, what, what the future might look like. And you, you need people who have thought about more um, the social repercussions of things. So you really need to bring people who all have all these different angles to the table. Uh, so I think, again, um, one of the important aspects here is, is scalability, because us as humans, um, and, and the fact that AI kind of amplifies and magnifies things. So often it's things that were already there, but they just get bigger because you, you, you can get big scale and amplification with AI. So it's like having a bigger tool. So it means you, you, everything gets bigger. And, and so um, the way it changes us is first, it accelerates many things. And uh, often as humans, you know, we haven't evolved that much in 10,000 years in terms of how our brain works, what we respond to, you know, we see sugar, we still jump for it as if it was this super rare thing in the jungle and it's not. Now you can get it so easily. And so for, for us, the way it changes, uh, AI changes, it, it's kind of forces us a bit to try to find ways to, um, adapt to a world that, that is moving fast. And also that is uh, where what we see around us is not our environment so much anymore. What I mean, mean by that is we have this, this um, often we react to things with narrative that we can um, understand easily. 
and this sense that this is our world, the people around us, and uh, th that come from experience. But now with AI, we can connect with people the other side of the world. We can we can um, get connected and um, and uh, share the experience with people who are really really far away because everything's so scalable. If you, if you think about uh, how lots of the um, AI models are trained often. It, it's based on, on data from lots and lots of people. And so I think this means that we get connected to a much bigger universe than uh, what we are experiencing day to day physically, especially right now when I, I'm experiencing my apartment. So, uh, And so it kind of like forces us to change a bit how, how we think about our intuitions, what we know to be true, uh, how we interact with the world.